and welcome to Time Value of Money. That's our session 10. My name is Dr. Vera Fiador. Now, time value of money. Now, this is one of the fundamental concepts of finance because of its relevance, especially in the area of investment appraisal. Now, time value of money is the idea that money available right now is worth more than the same amount of money available at a future date because of its potential earning capacity. Now, this core principle holds that provided money can earn interest, any amount of money is worth more the sooner it is received. Now, this session explains the concept of time value of money and seeks to equip students with the ability to calculate interest on cash flows and be able to determine present and future value of cash flows. At the end of the session, students are expected to be able to compute the present and future value of single cash flows or series of cash flows, be able to compute the return on an investment, be able to compute simple interest and compound interest and related ones. We are going to look at valuation, looking at the one period case, the multi period case, future value and compounding, present value and discounting. Now, in short, a CD today is worth more than a CD tomorrow because that CD today can be invested to earn some interest. So now let's look at a simple case here where we have simple interest. Now simple interest, as we all know, is the amount of interest earned on the principal amount stated in a given transaction. Now the principal amount stated is a base amount that we either borrow or save. So that if we look at interest, our interest is flowing from the principal that we have, the rate of re return that is quoted for that investment or the borrowing, and the time horizon attached to the package or the transaction. And so then, interest at any point in time is principal times rate times time. That refers to what? Simple interest. So take it for example that we borrow 1000 for one year at 8%, the interest that will accrue on it is 80. If we borrow 1,000 for six months, that's half a year, it means the interest accruing on it will be half of the annual amount, which will be 40. Now this is basically for simple interest, and so with the same principle of the formula, we can easily solve for the principle itself, if we know all the other parameters, we can solve for time, we can solve for it. Now, let's begin to look at a case where if we were to invest a thousand or ten thousand at five percent for one year, what will our investment value be? We realize that we would earn interest of five hundred to be added to our principal of ten thousand to give us ten thousand five hundred. Now that's easy, and so we move on. Now, this is how you calculate that. Because you're looking at it from the angle of the future value or the resulting future amount, you're computing that as your principal multiplied by 1 plus the rate of interest that is available on the facility. So in a one-period case, we can look at it as our current payment times 1 plus the R, where the current payment is a cash flow for today, and R is the appropriate interest rate. On the reverse, therefore, if someone were to promise you 10000 in one year, and the rate of interest on the market is 5%, then your investment is actually worth 9523 in terms of today's purchasing power. The reason being that if you were to invest 9,523 today at 5%, a year from today, you will have 10,000. So what you're receiving as 10,000 a year from today is not actually 10,000 in terms of what it can buy today. So in terms of today's currency, it is 9,523. Now that's a very important point when we want to look at promises made by people to us about payments that will be made in the coming season. So payments to be made in the future haven't got exactly the same value as the amounts being mentioned, but rather in terms of today has got a value referred to as the present value. And this can easily 
be computed as the one period case where we have our expected future amount in terms of the future divided by 1 plus r. Now, if you look at it closely, it's just a reworking of the future value formula to give us the present value. So in this case, the original principal we would have invested to get a future amount is now what we are solving for giving our future amount. Now, this is the simple case for the time value of money scenario. Now, it so happens that we can have multiple periods where payment is going to be made over a period of time, a one-time payment, but will be rolled over for a series of time periods. And then at the end of the day, we need to know how much we have or we need to know what that future payment is going to really be worth in terms of today. Now, to apply that in principle, therefore, it means that the future value at a future date or the value at a future date is a principle we have today in time zero right now multiplied by what we refer to as a compounding factor, which is our one plus the appropriate interest rate to the exponent t, where t is the number of time periods for which we will hold on to have our investments accrue the balance needed. Now, in terms of, let's say that you have a stock that currently pays a dividend of 1.1 and is expected to grow at 40 per year for the next five years. It means that every year, 40% is going to be added, 40% of the existing value will be added onto that and together that will be rolled. Now, this brings into play as well the fact that some compounding effect happens because in the case of simple interest, we have the 40% being computed only on the principal. But once we begin to do multi-period cases, as in this example, what really happens is that the interest of 40% and on 1.1 for the first period is added to the amount, giving us a bigger principal which now earns bigger interest because of the base and then it's re-added and that becomes the compounding effect. So at the end of the day, our 1.1 invested at or growing at 40% for five years will ultimately become 5.92. You could try your hands and see what the difference would be if you hadn't compounded but you have simple interest in which is principal times the rate times the time and add on to see whether there is a difference and surely there will be a difference and that is the effect of what compounding. So now this is the example we have here now. So as I said, if we were to do the compound, we have 5.92, but if we were to do the simple interest, we have 3.30. So compounding is a very valuable um, concept that you need to understand, especially as far as investment decisions are concerned. Now, let's go on with our future value. Now, to be able to master present values and future values, you can start to what we refer to as a timeline. In, in the timeline, reference zero is always referring to now, whereas time one refers to a period from one period from today. Now, depending on the spacing, it could be a year, it could be a month, it could be a week, it could be a quarter, it could be semi-annual. So the period is dependent on how the seasons have been categorized. So then we have a case where I have 1.1. It grows by 1.4 to 1.54, which also then grows in by from the second year to 2.16 and then it grows to 3.02 grow to 4.23 and then grows to 5.92 now this is the power of what compounding where the first payment grows to become that and this which is intrinsically this grows to become that and then it goes on and on now the same principle applies to present value for discounting over multiple periods. In this case, look at the case where an investor 
is hoping to be able to have 20,000 five years from now and they want to put away some money that will grow to 20,000 five years from today. So if you look at this as today, year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five, it means as we stand here today, if we can get 15% return on our investment, how much should we put away, which will grow periodically over the five seasons and accrue to 20,000. So what do we do is to discount backwards, take this amount, scale it and discount by the appropriate interest rate for the number of periods and we have 9,943. What it means is if we put away this amount of money in five years, we will have the needed 20,000. So you can apply this to your life. You want to take a holiday, you want to have a wedding, you want to build a house. You need to know how much you need in the future and ask yourself how much you need to put away in bulk today, given a certain interest rate to reach your goal. Now, that brings us to the end of the basics of time value of money. Do not forget to give your reading list some needed attention to ensure that you are on top of this particular material. Thank you and see you in the next session.